Welcome back, everyone, and welcome back to Corvette Edge Garage, house of Harley Davidsons and Corvettes and Fast Toys. And welcome back to part two of Why Buy an Older Harley Davidson Electric Glide Classic. And today, we're going to continue to cover if a 2003 Harley Davidson 100th year Electric Glide Classic can still compete with a 2023 Harley Davidson. Ultra Limited. As you remember, we did use a hypothetical uh, purchase bike of $7,500 and all the cots of all the cosmetic grades that were done uh, to the 2003 uh, Electric Glide Classic. Today we have a few more upgrades that we're going to be adding on and uh, we're going to be also add, uh, come up with the t final total of what everything costs. We also listed all the cosmetic upgrades and total cost of the products used in those upgrades. I also showed some of the installation, challenges, and modifications to the bike. So if you haven't watched part one yet, just hop over to my channel and search the motorcycle playlist. You'll also find other previous projects of motorcycles I've done in the past in that same playlist. Now the goal that I didn't mention in part one was to keep the bill to a 10K budget. So, so far, most of the upgrades I've done to the bike have been cosmetic upgrades. Now, cosmetic upgrades, that can get costly if you don't shop around. Shopping around may take a little extra work. However, it does keep the costs uh, low. And remember, it doesn't always have to be Harley OEM. Unless you want it to be. That's your, your preference. Now, there will be situations where you have no choice and you have to get Harley OEM. So remember that. Lights and turn signals. In 2023, the technology of LED lighting and cost is something that everyone can afford today. LED lights are brighter and you can be seen a lot better than the old lights that we used to have. As far as the safety aspect of it, you can't go wrong. Engine modification. We will not be covering engine mod modifications in this episode. However, I will cover briefly a couple of engine upgrades that will fit in the 10K budget. In this episode, I will cover the last of the cosmetic upgrades, the challenges and modifications needed to install those upgrades. Now, well, before we head on over to the candy shop, the candy shop is where I do the uh, product unboxing, I need to get something off my chest. In part one, I was commenting on the 117 uh, Harley Davidson motor. I thought I was, okay? Uh, I had a, a misprint. That's this clip right here. As you can see, it says 113 on there, and I actually meant 117. So, now that I have uh, gotten that off my chest, uh, let's uh, head on over to the candy shop right after this. Job that's uh, not too popular. 
It's called Night Watch uh, Blue, and Night Watch is spelled with a K. Um, so there's only so many of these that uh, were produced for the Peace Officer Edition motorcycle uh, by Harley Davidson. Um, so I got really lucky on these. I, you know, and I, and I kind of been looking off and on, you know, but it took me a good four months, three to four months, to stay on top of it to find these. Um, I have some buffing uh, tools and some buffing compound that I'm going to use to get the, those scuffs out. Nothing I can do about the uh, the nicks. These are definitely uh, period correct for my Harley Davidson. And this thing here is called a cruise mate. This is a poor man's cruise control. You turn that lever all the way over and it locks the throttle. You put it down, thumb it, and there it is right there. Let it go. Do it again. I mean, this. The flick of your thumb. And you could do this all with one hand, like so. And I didn't do an unboxing on the seat. It's a Harley Davidson tall boy seat for tall riders. Got it at a killer deal. I also didn't do an unboxing for the uh, Tank Bra. Uh, unfortunately, I'm using it as a cheap fix right now because the original seat tongue, front tongue, is longer. Uh, versus this seat here that's off of a street guide uh, tongue is shorter so when I pulled the seat off it left some really hev heavy smudges that I'm going to really need to uh, buff out with a uh, polisher now the trick is uh, I have tall boy cycles lower uh, floorboard uh, mounts the, the fairing interferes with so um According to Tarbo's Tarbo Cycle, they take a nice big chunk out of it. But I'm going to try some. I'm going to. I have two settings on the uh, uh, the the plate that's on the bike. I have a lower setting and a higher setting. You know, it's probably it'll probably lift it up about half an inch because my goal is just to notch out the fairing rather than do a big cut. So it shouldn't be uh, uh, too big too big of a deal. I, I want to make it look like it was made that way. So. Okay, uh, now that I have the uh, lower uh, fairing installed, I'm going to kind of give you an idea of what I have to do. The uh, Tallboy Cycle um, uh, floorboards, um, they, uh, they're they interfering with the fairing. So right about there, I'm going to need to uh, do some cutting. Uh, now, I like my floorboards at an angle, so I don't really have to cut much. And on this side, uh, it turned out where um, I uh, only need to kind of notch it uh, for the floorboard um, bolt to clear. And the floorboard will be pretty much on top of the interfering. So that's for this one here. Now, the other side is a little bit different. Let's go to that side. Okay, here we have the... Uh, uh, left side of the uh, lower fairing installed and as you can see um, I got to do a little bit more cutting on that one uh, so there's no notch in this one this one's going to be a bona fide cut so let me sh show you a picture of it with it uh, cut and where the floorboard sits okay this is my uh, mock-up cut uh, you see how I had to go around uh, to get that uh, bracket and the floor uh, the bottom of the floorboard to fit in there uh, without any issues now uh, I, I I did go back over with a Dremel and uh, I uh, corrected the uh, curve on that uh, again this is just a mock-up my first cut uh, to get an idea you can see that bracket where my finger is at uh, why well, I had to go further and welcome back Another two tip time. Welcome back to another tool tip time. Say that five times. Anyway, I just want to briefly go over uh, the tools I use to cut the fairing. Um, jigsaw um, and a fine blade. Okay. If you're going to cut, cut on plastic, fine blade works really good. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It's kind of awkward cutting those uh, fairings because there's, 
there's really it, it, okay the way they're shaped man you it, trying to hold it down and make that cut uh uh it was uh it, it was kind of rough that's why i ended up going over uh with the um the, over the over the cut with the with a dremel tool uh, that's this thing right here now uh, these uh these these are a lifesaver i'll tell you man um you can adjust the speed on them um you want to be careful though because uh, like i used uh uh, uh <clears throat> i'll show you what i used this guy right here it's uh, actually sandpaper uh you you don't want to go too high on the speed because if you do, you end up melting the plastic on it. So it um, takes a little bit more work at low speeds, but um, it, it's worth it in the end. Other than that, these are the tools I use for this project here. And now let's get on with showing you the final results of what this bike looks like and the total cost that I, I, I've accumulated up to this point. Well, there you have it guys. Uh, I'm pretty stoked and happy the way this turned out. I mean actually this is going back to the future. This is how I bought this bike. I purchased this bike years ago, uh, brand new, yeah. minus the lower fairings. Okay, uh, this is the, all the equipment that came on this bike. I think the lower fairing really do add a touch of class and it's going to protect me from the elements as far as the cold weather is concerned. Summertime, I'll probably take it off uh, because uh, it gets pretty hot out here. It gets over 100 degrees easy in the summertime, so I don't see that uh, uh, <laughs> having those lowers uh, and, uh, and during that heat. But anyway, I'm going to try it with the uh, lowers on and, see, and go from there. I'll make a decision on what to do from that point. But I'm pretty much going to leave the bike just like it is, right uh, uh, the way you see it. Um, but Anyway, the, I, I think this is more cost effective than going out and buying a brand new Harley Davidson. I mean, hey, by all means, if you want to go out and buy a brand new Harley Davidson, go for it. But you need to consider, you know, accessories. You're always going to want accessories to change up. You don't want to look like anybody else. So, I mean, you could probably, you could spend two, three thousand dollars easy on accessories for uh, these Harleys, you know, because they don't come cheap. And, you know, and then, of course, you're going to want to open up the breather, you know, because they're choked out from the factory. And they want to add some exhaust, you know, and, of course, uh, you know, I mean, the new ones, they, they got the bigger motors. But, uh, you know, if you, if you want to throw some cams in it, you know, I mean, uh, all that costs money. So you're probably looking at about, what, $5,000 to do uh, the exteriors, the, the stuff I just talked about. That's a lot of money, and I think you can't go wrong by picking up a used Harley and uh, well, one in good condition and doing exactly or better what I did here. I'm happy. Uh, I, I, I'm just I'm, I'm glad I did this. All right, now let's go uh, crunch some numbers and see what all this costs up to this point. Well, what do you think, guys? Uh, I I think it came out pretty nice. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm liking the uh, vintage classic Harley look. So, anyway, uh, we didn't really add too much stuff, but I mean, it was $419, like you see right here, in total. Uh, the big expense was the, uh, uh, excuse me, the, the tall boy seat and the lower fairings, and I really got lucky on both those items. Got to love eBay, and then the cruise mate, I love that thing. That, that, that makes it so much easier to lock that throttle uh, with a, a flip of your thumb. So uh, that was the total. So now let's add it up. And uh, here we have the grand total. Um, $8,600. I mean, I, I wanted to keep the, the, the budget to about ten grand. Uh, you know, for to be realistic, okay? So with $8,600, you still have room to add performance good uh, products to the, to the machine. Okay, I mean, you could do a set of cams, uh, possibly a big bore for, uh, yeah, you could probably do a big bore too, uh, and, and, and hit that uh, uh, $10,000 line. Uh, now, now granted, 
you know, all the labor is going to be you, just like it was me, okay? Now, if you, for, you farm, farm stuff out like that, it's going to be more expensive, but it's really not too hard. To, to do what you need to do on these motorcycles or a car for that matter you know so it, it, you got to keep that in mind if you do the labor it's going to be cost effective if you don't do the labor it's going to cost you more uh, and you know you'll probably exceed that uh, ten thousand dollar mark uh, uh, budget that uh, i set for this now but other than that uh, uh, it's been great. Uh, I'm glad I did what I did to this. Uh, it came out really good. And you can see it's, not, it's really not that hard to do what you need to do and still keep it cost effective. Uh, you know, all work and no play, that don't work for me. It's time to uh, go out and have some fun. It's time for me to go out and Take her out for a nice ride, okay? Uh, and do me a favor, go ahead and hit that uh, uh, subscribe button. Uh, and if you enjoyed the video and you learned something, hit that like button. Until then, guys, uh, this was fun. We'll catch you on another episode of Corvette's Garage. Take care.